Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard that has been highly requested that I review and so I reached out to Yunzi, I asked him if I could take a look at it and here it is. This is the Yunzi B75 which is also the model of a couple other keyboards but we'll get into that in a little bit. So it's a 75% with a knob. I do believe it's a three mode and gasket mounted. But again, this keyboard, because um, I didn't have it, I didn't look too much into it. I mean, I've seen it posted before, um, this one and the other brand that it sells under. And uh, I've been interested, but I just didn't read too much about it. So I'm going to be finding out about it as we go along. So let's go ahead and open it and see what we've got in the box. All right, setting the keyboard aside for just a second, let's see what we have loaded here. We have a nice user manual. I do have to say I prefer that when they provide little booklets like this, they're a lot less likely to get lost or misplaced. Um, I do wish they would come up with a standard, though, big, small, something, so that I have a folder where I store my user manuals, and some of them are just kind of popping out. Some of them are tiny. Just, it would be nice if they stuck to a certain format, but I doubt we're going to see that. Now, along with the user manual, we have the accessories. Okay, it looks like we've got a couple of extra switches, and if I'm not mistaken... Yep, these are the Leo Bog Greywoods. These are a fun, light, uh, linear switch that have a nice pop. Sound very well stock. No need for lubrication. I have, I want to say probably two or three hundred of these already. Um, because I think on a lot of keyboards, they're a nice and quick, easy fix to make it sound good. And for gamers, because of the lightweight, I think it's going to be appreciated. I, It's akin to like a speed silver almost, but I think it sounds a little bit better. That's just my opinion. But I do think... Yunzi for included a couple extra switches in there because who knows it's always nice to have an extra now we have a pair of wire switch and keycap puller the standard non-branded and we have a plastic USB A to USB C connector cable and here we are with the Yunzi B75 now this appears to be a wired version only. I do believe that there's both a wireless and a wired version, and that's where the USB dongle would go. But this one does have a switch, and I prefer switches rather than key combination because it's easier to see, okay, I'm in Windows mode or I'm in Android mode. So we're going to go ahead and leave it in Windows mode, even though we're on a Linux. So we have actually a nice feeling, nice weighted keyboard. It's a um, for a plastic keyboard, it feels much more substantial than uh, a lot of pre-built keyboards um, in this price range. Now, we do have a nice knob. It is circular. It's not a D knob, and I like the, I don't know if that's aluminum, but it feels like aluminum on the outside with a plastic inner layer. But it has a nice tactility, and then it has a nice clicks as you move along and turn it. We do have a 75% layout compressed, so we just have the blocker. We have the function here. I'm usually a fan of the function here, but we'll have to take a look at the software and see if it allows us to remap that. We have a caps lock light indicator light, which I really do appreciate. It looks like we have a, um, a light here, probably just for aesthetic purposes, but we have a very nice sounding keyboard right out of the gate. I got to say, this sounds really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got in here. All right, so we got a north facing keyboard. A lot of folks prefer north facing. And now that most of the switches have been adopted or they've been updated to not, in, not um, 
show the interference or not cause interference with Cherry uh, Profile keycaps, um, which, yep, these do appear to be Cherry. I don't think they're OEM. I'm pretty sure that's a Cherry Profile. Yeah, that's a Cherry Profile. Um, so we have a north-facing keyboard for those of you, you folks that are looking for north-facing. Um, on the PCB, let's see here, where is my little poker? Like we do have a PC plate. Oh, and it's a PC plate with flex cuts. All right. We have a PET sheet above the PCB as well as an IXPE foam. So this is becoming quite standard. And I, for one, I don't have a problem with it because I like how it sounds. And for a lot of folks, this is going to be a sound that, that is going to be enjoyable right out of the box and something that they're going to be able to say, hey, this is good to go. I'm ready to get to work or to gaming. And they won't have to be like, mm, I want to mod it because I want it to sound a little bit poppier or a little bit more life. Um, now, granted, you know, you can open it up and take those sheets out of there and it's going to sound a little less lively. But it has that built-in good sound out of the box. And I think that a lot of people are going to appreciate it over something that just sounds flat and lifeless. Let's take a look at the stabilizers here. All right, so we got your standard plate mounted stabilizers and oh okay now they're lubricated they're just very lightly lubricated inside of the post but they're not lubricated on the elbows on the actual wire where it meets and then you see how this uh there's this looseness there this is the kind of stabilizer that would benefit from say a plumber's mate a plumber's mod where you take plumber's tape such as this, the Teflon tape that you use to uh, seal faucets, and you wrap it two to three times around each end of the wire, and that basically is going to increase the tolerances so you don't get that loose movement. Now, let me see on here. It does not look like... Oh, wait a minute. Huh. There may be... I don't think so, but there might just be the minimal chance that this would have set screw and stabilizers. But when we do have them loaded on the plate and we have them locked, they are well attached, but they could use a little bit of tape to improve that, um, that looseness. A bit of tape, but either here and here on either side is going to allow it to, to you know, make up for the difference in tolerances so that it's not going to rattle. But um, do not fret. It actually sounds and feels pretty good regardless. I, I don't really have any complaints. That space bar sounds lovely. Come on. Uh, I mean... In my opinion, that is on point. Oh, a stabilizer wanted to come loose just from me pulling up on it. Now these, see that's an inconsistency with um, lubrication because these are definitely lubricated. And see, we've got these come out this way. I can take this out. These are over lubricated. Huh. So we've got one set of stabilizers that are lightly lubricated and one that are over lubricated. So that's interesting, but yeah, we have that looseness. These are, fortunately these milky kind of stabilizers are not the ones that I would usually go with. Um, there's a lot of the newer stabilizers that are actually made out of palm instead of, I believe this is PC plastic but I'm not about to go burn them to find out. Um, I think that they uh, they just offer a better uh, better sound off the bat, and I've actually dealt with some that weren't even lubricated that were perfectly fine to go stock, which is uh, honestly, in my opinion, a rarity. All right, so we put those blockers back in there to load the Leo Bog Greywood V3 back in. All right, we definitely can see 
that we got some flexiness here. Like I said, on the back, we have the input for the USB-C, and we have a Mac, Windows, and Android mode. And on the bottom, we have two sets of flip-out feet or three different typing angles. Now, I do, do say I like the colorway as well. It's got a mix of what I would call almost a gold beige, um, which they, you know, they, there's basically three colors, the light gray, the black and then this gold beige color that just blends nicely it's almost like a combination of two different keycap sets that i know the legends are fairly clear although they're a little bit rounded and the spacing is a little bit off i don't think it's that big of a deal but we do have double shot keycaps that are 1.3 millimeters in thickness, which is pretty good. Um, I've seen better, but I've also seen much worse. So double shot keycaps that are in the 1.3 millimeter are definitely good. And we can hear it because that sounds pretty good. I mean, this keyboard, like I said, for most people, this is going to be it. They're ready to good to go. But with a few little different, you know, modifications, whether it's changing out the switches and or the keycaps as well as say changing the foams either removing them putting more in changing what's at the bottom of it um, removing the plate pcb foam modifying the pt or the ixp sheet layer they're all going to allow this keyboard to sound completely different but it has a good bass sound so what you get out of the box is good and usable for most and if you're going to put a little bit of effort into it you're going to get a keyboard that you'll be able to reach you know either you want that clacky kind of sound profile or more of that thocky i think this one is almost in the middle and with the right switches and the right keycaps you'll be able to reach that profile that you prefer let's go ahead and plug it in and see what the lights look like all right, that's an odd effect that's got going on there, but let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, now it looks like we can use either the function to change the uh, effects. Can we press it and turn it into the audio? Yep, so it's a two-mode button, but let me see, fixed on function. All right. Oh, well, I was uh, kind of curious why the uh, lights, this one is a single color, only that light blue. Can I get a solid? Oh, there we go. All right, so there it is, solid. Like I said, we have the caps lock indicator, but all we have on this one is the, they call it the single blue light, even though it's kind of more of a white blue. It is a blue light. LED. So I thought those LEDs seemed like one color, but I wasn't sure. So we have the different effects. We can turn it off. And then we have we have windows where we can lock the windows key in so it doesn't get accidentally triggered while we're playing games. I actually have a pretty good um, instruction manual for how to remove the keys and how you got to grab the clips on either end, which not many do. Um, Keychron will say, be very careful about the pins, but they don't provide any guidance as to um, how to pull out the switches. I actually, I made a short about a year ago about how to remove switches from keyboards. I think it's at 480,000 views right now. And so many thanks from people that are like, ah, oh, thanks. I didn't know. I thought I was grabbing it from the side. And I've actually seen some manuals that show an example of grabbing of using the switch and grabbing the switch from either side which it's not going to get the switch out of there you have to grab these little tabs that are on there are meant to unlock the tabs that all switches have at the front and the back these are actually the locks see they have those little i guess you could say teeth coming out of there but when you press this in when you lock when it's you know on the plate that's going to help release it from the plate same thing on the front so that's why you want to make sure i mean there's going to be some boards that are a little bit 
harder to pull than others, but as long as you've got these clips depressed, you should be able to pull it out with very little force. Now, I mean, I will say, I know some people just don't want, you know, the RGB effects, and that's fine, but they can turn them off. I just, uh, I don't know. The LED price and the controller for the RGBs isn't, there's not much of a price difference, so I honestly don't see why some keyboards are put out in a blue light. I don't know, especially... I mean, blue is the last color that I'd match with this keycap set. So, as far as colors go, I would have gone with a white or even a gold. Um, you know, if you're going to go with a single color, or I would have just bypassed RGB altogether to put in, to put LEDs in just one color, especially when it doesn't even go with the the the. Well, it's not a, a, a theme. But, you know, the, the colorway that's already kind of been decided for this keyboard. On a white keyboard with white keycaps and blue legends, yeah, okay, that blends in. So I can turn it on if I want it to bring out the color of my keycaps, or I can just turn it off. But using a blue color with a set of black, gray, and beige keycaps, uh, I don't know. Personally, I just wouldn't have made the choice. I would have rather just not put RGBs on it at all and leave me those controls that you're using for RGB that I know I'm probably not going to be able to remap so that I can remap to, to other things. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Yunzi B75 wired 75% keyboard that comes with a single blue white LED color. It is a north facing PCB with both three and five pin hot swappable PCB includes a PET and an IXPE layer above the PCB, as well as padding below the PCB and between the plate and the PCB. It does have a gasket-mounted PC plate and is preloaded with Leo Bog Greywood V3 and double-shot Cherry keycaps. They do not make clear if they're PBT or ABS. This keyboard's MSRP is $79.99, though it is currently on sale for $65.99 and it comes weighing in at 900 grams on the dot. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 35 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of seven degrees. Using the first set of flip out feet will raise the back up to 38 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to nine degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet will give you a back height of 44 millimeters and a typing angle of 13 degrees. So as far as this keyboard goes, now it is currently on sale for $65.99. It shows the price usually being $79.99. I personally would say I would have taken out the RGB altogether and gone for more of a $50 price point. I think it would move a lot quicker like that because of what can be purchased in this price range. I mean, we're Yunzi has a couple of aluminum 65% that are in this price range preloaded that have full RGB, so, and are three mode. So it's kind of, I, I'm trying to figure out what the, what the reasoning behind the price is. It is a good keyboard and it sounds really good out of the box. And if you're really looking for just a blue light background, which I've, I've heard many times people ask for keyboards with no RGB. And I've heard for keyboards with white LED, but I've never heard anyone ask, can you find me a keyboard that only has the blue white or the blue backlight? And that's it. That's the only color I want. No, usually people either want RGB and they want to choose from all the colors or they don't want RGB. But just blue? Mm, never heard it. So I don't know where they came to this decision. But otherwise, I mean, we're dealing with a decent 75% that sounds great to go out of the box. On their website, they do say PB, PBT slash ABS keycaps. Well, which one is it? I mean, if different colors have different sets, then say 
white and blue because it does come, it does come in black, white, and white pink. But if it, you have different sets of key caps, then say this key cap set, this color, this color, or ABS, this color, and this color, or PBT. But just saying it comes with key caps and the cherry profile, ABS slash PBT, kind of leaves customers going, well, good to is it? So, and it's usually not the easiest thing to find out. I'll reach out to Yunzi and I'll ask and see if I get a response. Now, I'll come back to this keyboard at some time in the future and switch out the keycaps and the uh, switches and show how much of a difference I believe that this keyboard can sound because it does have, like I said, a really good bass sound profile and it feels really good. It's not super bouncy. It's not something that you're going to feel like you're on a trampoline, but it does have really nice um, out of the box profiles as far as sound goes and it feels really good. It's also a compact 75% so it's going to work for a lot of people but again it's not wireless and it only has a single RGB. If it was wireless and it had full RGB then I'd say yeah the price that it's selling for seems fair but like I said when they have other keyboards that are basically the same price as this one but our three mode and our aluminum as well as fully loaded. Now granted 65%, um, 68 key, 71 key. So it's, it's hard for me to kind of, you know, make those work together. Cause where, where does this one stand out above that one? And why are they about the same price when there's a very, you know, there's a good gap of functionality and features between the two. I don't know, but those are questions that I ask. Anyway, um, like I said, I will come back to this in the near future. If you guys have any questions about this keyboard, any suggestions for things you'd like me to do once I open it up, mods uh, you'd like for, for me to do to it, any questions at all, please ask them down in the comment section. I respond to all comments, uh, and I do my best to do it within a reasonable amount of time. Otherwise, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test. Yunzi B75, 75% wired keyboard preloaded from Yunzi. I'll pr provide a link down to uh, where it's available on their site below. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.